In this Thingscape lesson, we'll create a Viking character game asset and we'll make him easily posable for simple animations. To start creating our Viking's torso, we can first go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle. Let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here. Let's give the rectangle a brown fill. Also, if your rectangle happens to have a stroke around it, you can go to the Stroke Paint tab and turn off the stroke by clicking the X here. Next, let's turn this rectangle into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then let's go to the Node tool, select the two top nodes, and click this button up here to turn them into smooth nodes, giving the top a more rounded shape. Next, I'll double click here to add a new node, bring it in a bit, and adjust the handle some. I'll add another node here, and I'm going to turn this one into a cusp node with this button up here. I'll drag this node out more to form the bottom of the tunic. I'll add a couple nodes on this side as well. We can grab this segment here and drag it down to curve it. Next we can give him a belt so he can keep his meat belly from popping out. For this we can go back to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle going across the narrow part here. I'll make the fill color 50% gray. Then I'll turn it into a path by going to path, object to path. Then switch to the node tool and curve these segments a bit. To zoom in and out, I'm holding down the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel. And we can pan by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. I also want to round the corners of the belt a bit. To do this, we can go to Path, Path Effects to open the Path Effects dialog. Then click the plus button at the bottom of the dialog. Then choose Corners, Fill it slash Chamfer here. Now using the node tool, we can drag these green diamond handles at the nodes to round the corners. Okay, when we have the corners the way we want them, we can finalize the path effect by going to Path, Object to Path. Let's also add a buckle to the belt. We can again go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a square about right here. I'll give this a gold fill. Now we can turn it into a path and use the node tool to adjust some things a bit. I'll also use the corners path effect to round the corners of this. This time I'll round all of the corners together by increasing the radius parameter here. Now I'll finalize it. Next we want to cut out the center of the buckle. To do this we can go to the select tool and duplicate the buckle by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Let's change the color of the duplicate so we can see it. Then let's hold shift and control and scale it down some. Now we can select both of these paths and go to path, difference. Okay, now we're going to give a border to all of these paths. Let's start with the brown path by selecting it and going to path, linked offset. This creates an offset object underneath the selected path and selects the offset object. We can't see it at the moment, but we can go ahead and change this color to black. Now if we go to the node tool, we can see this diamond handle here which we can drag out to outset the object. Pretty cool, right? Now we can turn it into a normal path by going to Path, Object to Path. Next we can do the same with the belt. Let's first select it, and we can do Linked Offset with the shortcut Control alt j Let's turn the offset object black, then outset it. Then turn it into a path with the shortcut Shift Control c Let's do the same with the buckle. Okay, cool. I'll make the buckle pieces a bit bigger. We can also add in some lines here to give him some pecs. An easy way to do this is to go to the pin tool and change the shape setting up here to ellipse. Then create a curved path like this. The ellipse shape option gives the path tapered ends. We can also go to the node tool and use this handle here to adjust the width. Okay, let's go back to the pin tool and create another path like this down here. Let's go ahead and change the shape setting back to none for now. We also want to go to the select tool, select both of these paths, and turn them into normal paths with shift control C. Okay, to finish up the torso, we can add some shadows and highlights. First, for a shadow, let's go to the pin tool and click up here, making sure to click inside the black border. Then we can create a path going down like this. Click inside the border at the bottom, then trace around the back of the torso, keeping the line within the border, Click the first point again to close it off. 
Let's turn off the stroke of this by holding shift and clicking the red X down here. Let's make the fill color something like 20% gray. Now to make this look like a shadow, we can go to the fill and stroke dialog, and at the bottom here, let's change the blend mode to multiply. Nice. Next we'll add a highlight to the front of the chest. We can first click up here inside the border, create a path down through here, click inside the border here, then trace back around to the first point. Let's turn off the stroke, give it a fill color of about 30% gray, and this time we want to change the blend mode to overlay. We can also add a highlight to the bottom of the tunic here. I'll add a few highlights to the belt and buckle as well. And maybe one here for the chest. Finally, we can go to the select tool and select everything. Then group it all together by right clicking and choosing group. And our Viking's torso is finished. Before we start creating the rest of our Viking, we want to set up some layers for each section of the body. This will allow us to hide and lock sections to prevent us from accidentally modifying them. And it will also make it easier to maintain the stacking order of the sections. For example, keeping the head always in front of the torso and the torso always in front of the lower body. To work with the layers, we first need to open the Layers and Objects dialog by going up to the Layer menu and choosing Layers and Objects. If we put our cursor on this top left button here, we can see that by default we have one layer called Layer 1. All the objects we created for the torso are inside Layer 1. Let's go ahead and rename Layer 1 by double clicking its label here. Let's call it Torso. Now we can go ahead and create layers for all the other parts of the body. To create a layer, we click this button with the plus sign. Let's call this one Head. We won't worry about changing the positioning here because we can actually do this pretty easily in the list. So let's go ahead and click add. Now let's add another layer called pelvis. And we want to grab the torso layer in the list and drag it down so it's between the head and pelvis layers. Now let's add another layer, let's call it front leg. Because we're drawing our viking facing toward the right, the front leg will technically be his right leg. But if we make it so he can face to the left in our game, his front leg will then become his left leg. So to make things less confusing, instead of using right and left leg, we'll use front and back leg. We'll do the same for the arms. Now for the front leg, we want it to appear below the torso and above the pelvis. So let's grab it in the list and drag it down so it's between the torso and pelvis layers. Then let's create another layer for the back leg. And of course we want to put the back leg below the pelvis. Now we just need to create two more layers for the front and back arms. For the front arm, we want to have it at the very top, so it appears above everything. And for the back arm, we want to put it all the way at the bottom. Now we should be good to go. In the Layers and Objects dialog, let's go back to the torso layer really quick. Let's lock it by clicking this lock icon here. This will stop us from accidentally modifying or adding anything to the layer. Okay, the first part of the lower body we'll work on is the pelvis. So first, let's click the pelvis layer here to activate it. The pelvis is going to be pretty simple. Let's start by going to the Circles and Ellipses tool. Let's create an ellipse down here for now. For the fill color, I'll make it kind of a dull brown. Now we can turn it into a path. Then go to the Node tool and adjust it a bit. Okay, now we can give it a border by doing Linked Offset with Control alt j making it black, and outsetting it. Let's go ahead and turn the offset into a path with shift Control c For a shadow, I'll go to the pin tool, click up here inside the border, create a path down through here, click inside the border here, then bring it back around to the first point. I'll turn off the stroke, make it 20% gray, and change the blend mode to multiply. I'll create another path over here for a highlight. Turn off the stroke, make it 30% gray, and change the blend mode to overlay. Okay, now we can group all of these paths together. Then we can move it to where we want it under the torso and adjust the size a bit if necessary. That should be good for a simple pelvis. Okay, next we'll work on the front leg. So first, let's go to the Layers and Objects dialog. Let's go ahead and lock the pelvis layer, then switch to the front leg layer. Our Viking doesn't care much about leg day, so we'll give him some skinny legs by going to the Squares and Rectangles tool and creating a thin rectangle here. 
Let's grab the circular handle at the top right and drag it down a bit to round the corners just a little. All right, let's use the color picker tool to make it the same color as the pelvis. Now we can do linked offset with Control alt j make it black, go to the node tool and outset it, then turn it into a path. Okay, so now what we want to do is hide this top part of the border so that the leg blends in with the pelvis. An easy way to do this is to select the main object here and turn it into a path. Then grab all of the top nodes, hold control and move them up just enough to cover the top of the border. This also gives us a nice tapered look at the ends. Okay, now let's use the pen tool to add a shadow and highlight to this. Alright, so his die is finished. We can go ahead and group it all together and readjust the size if we want. Next, for the lower part of the leg, let's go back to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rounded rectangle overlapping the bottom of the die like this. Let's make it the same color as the die and give it a black border. Let's go ahead and turn both of these into paths. For a shadow, we can duplicate the brown path, make it 20% gray, and change the blend mode to multiply. Then we can duplicate again, hold control and move this one to the right, then hold shift and increase the height a bit. Now we can hold shift and select this path, then go to path, difference. And we can follow similar steps for the highlight. Okay, now let's select all of these parts here and group them together. Then let's duplicate it and bring it down here. Now adjust the size of these a bit. Now if we want, we can select both of these groups, then hold shift and select the die group, open the align and distribute dialog with this button up here, and with the last selected chosen as the anchor, we can click this button to align them vertically. Next, we can work on the boot. I'll go to the pin tool and create a path like this, making it straight across the bottom. I'll turn off the stroke and give it the same fill color as the tunic. Then I'll add the corners path effect to it and round some of the corners. Let's finalize the path effect. Then we can give it a black border with length offset. We can also add a short tapered line here to show a bend in the boot. For this, we can go to the pen tool and change the shape setting to triangle in. With this, we can create a path going from the border here into the boot, and it gives the path a triangular shape. We can go to the node tool and use this pink diamond handle to adjust the width. Then we can turn it into a normal path. Now let's add a shadow and highlight, making sure to first put the pen tool shape back on none. Okay, now we can select all of the boot parts and group them together. Then we can click this button up here to send the boot to the bottom. Now we can select the three lower leg parts and group them together. Okay, for the back leg, we can simply duplicate the entire front leg, hold control and move it to the right, then right click it, choose move to layer, Choose back leg and click move. Now we're going to start the real fun by drawing our Viking's head. So first let's go to the layers and objects dialog, lock the back leg and front leg layers, and select the head layer. Okay, so let's begin with the helmet. For this we can first go to the circles ellipses tool and create an ellipse up here. I'll make this the same color as the tunic. I'm going to use the select tool to rotate it a bit. Then I'll turn it into a path and use the node tool to change up the shape some. I'm going to turn the two nodes on the sides into cusp nodes and sharpen the corners.
Okay, next I'll go to the pin tool and create a path here for a metal strip going down the center. I'll turn off the stroke, make it the same gray as the belt, and use the pin tool to shape it. Next I want to cut off the excess parts of this. So I'll go to the select tool and duplicate the brown path. Hold shift and select the gray path, and go to path, intersection. Alright, for a strip going across the front, I'll duplicate the brown path, and make it the same gray as the other strip. Now I'll duplicate again, make this one any color, bring it up here, hold shift and select the gray path, and go to path, difference. Now let's go ahead and use linked offset to add some black borders to these paths and also add some shading. Then I'll select all of this and group it together. Okay, for the horns, we'll use the power stroke path effect to make our lives easier. First, let's go to the pin tool and create a horn shaped path like this. Now let's go to the path effects dialog, click the plus button at the bottom, and choose power stroke here. Now in here, we want to change the start cap parameter to butt. Then we can go to the node tool and adjust the handles and nodes until we have a nice horn shape. Okay, we can turn it into a normal path now. I'm going to drag out this bottom segment here to round it a bit. And I'll use the select tool to adjust the positioning some. Alright, for the fill color, I'll make it 20% gray, then let's finish it up by adding a border and shading. For the shadow, I'll go with a 20% gray. For the highlight, I'll go with 5% gray. Now we can select all the horn parts and group them together. Then for the other horn, we can simply duplicate this one, flip it horizontally with the H key, put it over here, and send it below the helmet. Let's go ahead and group all of the helmet parts together, then position it where we want it. Okay, now let's draw the beard. For this, we can go to the pin tool and create a jagged path going down like this. Now let's turn off the stroke and give it an orange fill. Then we can go to the node tool and curve these segments a bit. Okay, now let's work on the border and shading. Alright, for the face, I'll go to the pin tool and create a path in here. Then change up the shape a bit. I'll turn off the stroke and give it a peach color. Then I'll give it a black border. Now we can select all of the beard parts and the face, group them together, and put it below the helmet. 
Next, for an eye, I'll go to the Circles Ellipses tool and create an ellipse in here. I'll make it about 10% gray, and go to the Select tool and rotate it some. Now I'll go back to the Circles Ellipses tool and create a black circle for the pupil. Alright, now I'm going to give the eye a black border. Then I'm going to select all three of these objects and turn them into paths. Now I'll put the top half of the eye in shadow. Now I'll group all of the eye objects together. To create a selection while inside an object like this, we can hold shift before clicking. Next I'll go to the pin tool and create a path up here for an eyebrow. I'll turn off the stroke and give it the same fill color as the beard. I'll give it a black border and put the top part in highlight. Now I'll group the eyebrow paths together. For the other eye, I'll duplicate both the eye and eyebrow groups. Press H to flip them horizontally, move them over here, and adjust the size a bit. I'm also going to select just the eye group here, double click it to enter the group, and move the pupil to the right some so he doesn't look like he's crossing his eyes. Now I'll select the beard to get out of the eye group. Next I'll use the pen tool to create a path for the nose. I'll turn off the stroke, and I'll just give this a random fill color for now until I get it shaped the way I want it. Now I'll make it the same color as the face, then I'll give it a black border. Now I'm going to select the main path here and drag out these nodes to cover this side of the border. And I'll use the circles ellipses tool to add a highlight near the top point of the nose. Then I'll group these objects together. Next we can give him a mustache. I'll turn off the stroke, make it the same color as the beard, and give it a black border. I'll also give it some shading. I'll now group all of this together, duplicate it, flip it horizontally, move it over here, and adjust it all a bit. Now I'm going to select the nose and move it above the two mustache groups. Okay, now we can select all of the head parts and group them together. Next we'll give our Vikings some arms. First let's go to the Layers and Objects dialog and lock the head layer, then select the front arm layer. For the upper arm, I'll start with an ellipse here, make it the same color as the face, then turn it into a path and adjust the shape a bit. Now let's add a black border and some shading. Let's group it all together. Now I'll go to the pen tool and create a path for the forearm and hand. I'll turn off the stroke and give it the same fill color as the upper arm, adjust it a bit and give it a black border.
We want to select the path here and drag up these nodes some to cover the border here. I'll reposition and resize these just a bit. We can also use the ellipse shape option in the pin tool to create an elliptical path here on the hand. I'll put the shape setting back on none, then go to the node tool and adjust this a bit. Now I'll turn it into a normal path. We can also give him a wristband. I'll make this the same color as the tunic. I'll add a black border to this, then do some shading for the whole arm. Now we can select all of the forearm parts and group them together. For the back arm, let's duplicate both arm groups, bring them over here for now, right click, choose move to layer, and move them to the back arm layer. Okay, next we want to double click the forearm group to enter into it. Let's go ahead and delete the shadow, highlight, and border for now. Let's delete this path here as well. Now we don't need this hand here, so let's go to the pin tool and create a path around here. Then select both paths and go to Path, Difference. I'll bring these nodes down a bit. Now we can go ahead and give it a black border again. Next for the fingers, we can go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rounded rectangle here. Turn it into a path, make it the same color as the arm, and give it a black border. Now we can group these together, rotate it some, and create some duplicates for the rest of his sausage fingers. Now we can add some shadows and highlights to this. Alright, so for the back arm, we actually want to select the upper arm group and move it above the forearm group. Then we want to go to the node tool and cover up the border down here. We also need to adjust the shadow and highlight. Okay, now we can select both back arm groups move them into place. Alright, the final thing we have to create for our viking is his sword. And we also want to create this on the back arm layer. First, let's go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle over here for now. Let's sharpen the corners with this button up here, then let's turn it into a path. I'll go to the node tool, select the two top nodes, and join them into a single node with this button. I'll then make it a symmetric node with this button, then grab one of the node handles, hold control and drag them in a bit. Next I'll select the top node and bottom left one and click this button up here to insert a new node between them. I'll do the same with the top node and bottom right one. I'll then select both new nodes, click this button to show the transformation handles, then hold shift and drag out one of the scale handles. I'll also hold control and bring these up a bit. And maybe the two bottom nodes down a bit. Okay, now we can make this the same gray as the horns and give it a black border. Next for the handle, I'll simply create a rectangle here. Turn it into a path. Make it the same gray as the belt. 
Then I'll create another rectangle down here, turn it into a path, and I'll move this one below the other rectangle. Then I'll add black borders to them. Now we want to select all of these objects and use the Align and Distribute dialog to center them vertically. Okay, for a shadow, I'll turn on Snapping with this button up here, then go to the Pen tool, snap to this cusp node at the top of the sword, turn Snapping back off, hold Control and click down here inside the border, then bring it around inside the border on the right side. I'll turn off the stroke, make it 20% gray, change the blend mode to multiply. For a highlight, I'm going to duplicate the main sword path and make it 5% gray. Then I'll duplicate again, make this one any color, hold control and bring it down here, then hold shift and select the other path and go to path, difference. I'll change the blend mode of this to overlay. Then I'll duplicate the shadow path, hold shift and select the highlight path and go to path, difference. I'll also create a highlight on this top part of the handle using the pen tool. We can also add a couple highlights going across the blade. For this, we can go to the Squares of Rectangles tool and create a rectangle across here. Then let's go to the Select tool, click the rectangle to get the rotation and skew handles, hold Alt, and drag down the right skew handle twice to skew at 30 degrees. Now we can duplicate this and bring it down here. We can go back to the squares and rectangles tool and use the handles to resize these a bit. Now we can select both of them and turn them into a single path by going to path, union. Then we can duplicate the main sword path here, hold shift and select the highlight path and go to path, intersection. Now I'll simply change the blend mode of this to overlay. Okay, we're finished drawing the sword so we can group it all together. Then we can move it over here and rotate it to match the angle of the arm. Resize it if necessary. And put it below the arm. And finally, we can select both the sword and the forearm and group them together. Because we separated our Viking into different parts, we can easily rotate and move parts around to put them in different poses. Like an attack pose, for example. Or maybe a victory pose. But of course, if we're planning to put him in a game, we would want to export all of his parts separately. Then we can load them into a game engine like Unity, which usually have some kind of character rigging system that makes it easy to pose our characters in different ways and create animations for them. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.